Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to the channel. I am making a vlog today um, because there is this really interesting thing called the Singapore's Writers Fest that is happening in November. It's happening now and I'm gonna get ready for the second weekend. Rain has gotten a bit heavier uh, <laughs> since I recorded the video just now. Um, I am currently getting ready to go out. I don't know how I can head out in the <laughs> So I'm just gonna be packing my stuff and getting ready to go out to a panel. Um, this panel is co-presented by Ethos. Um, it's I think on care um, and how to practice care I think uh, in communities I hope. Um, I'm not too sure but Ethos uh, panels have always been very good. So I heard great things about the previous panel that we had um, that was on uh, decolonizing your reading. I uh, couldn't make it for that one, unfortunately. I just hope I get to pack my stuff and get out and reach the venue safe without getting too drenched. So good luck to us. There's a toy here that HMP completely obliterate, obli obli obliterated. Yeah. First panel, it was co-presented by Ethos, so I do think that Ethos has has had experience in running panels and especially panels that respond very directly to contemporary issues um, um, such as like you know race studies or disability studies and they're always like the forefront of producing these works in Singapore and I do think they have created quite a niche for themselves in terms of like anthologies, uh, non-fiction um, collections and things like that and you know they produce really important like they really support authors or thinkers that push these ideas forward in a very necessary way. So that's always a good thing. I'm always very glad to be supporting Ethos in their work and you know they always send me review copies um, you know, which I think you know is a huge privilege to, to be able to read this, these works before they're officially launched. So actually Brown is redacted. We'll be officially launching during the festival a week from now. Um, so that is the official launch although you can already order their books on the website so if you want to order their books please do go ahead uh, to the ethos website to get your your copy but you can get them from a lot of the other local booksellers as well i'm not sure whether ethos will be keeping the panel live notes on their web page for a long time but if they do i will link that as well as their previous panels which they co-presented at the festival um, like I said, I do think Ethos has had experience doing these panels, so they tend to be a bit more, you know, aware and cautious of accessibility needs um, in panels. So they do have live take note taking. Okay, so yeah, I think then moving on to the second panel, which it which was on about cliches. I think it's the cliches that cause us to trouble or something like that. I don't. I I didn't. I don't really know Jeanette Winterson. I've never read her work. Um, apparently a lot of people have read her works and, and she's pretty iconic in her own way. She's had a 40 year long writing career which is pretty amazing and she has produced a lot of, bo of books, a lot of writing uh, and now she's also writing quite a number of non-fiction which I might pick up after knowing her a little bit more. So this panel was a bit more on the creative writing side. Um, it had Noor as well as Joel Tan and you know I've been a huge fan of Noor's works. They've been such a great, um, how do I say this, like like voice and perspective in, in the way that they bend different genres. So, so I think Noor started in photography and then moved over to um, writing and performance and I've always loved their contributions in, in photography to a lot of anthologies because I think from my experience like I'm also not someone that's like oh everything has to be through words um, 
literary means. Fans of literature are really fans of, of words, you know, and actually literature isn't just words, it is about, you know, a lot of different things. It's about form, genre, content, audience, etc. As long as there is some kind of story being told, you can read it as literature, like literature, literature, uh, yeah, and I was a literature student up till like high school or like the equivalent of high school in Singapore. I, I didn't continue with it, um, even though I, I did enjoy literature, but I didn't really enjoy like words per se. I mean, I, ju I just enjoyed the whole process of dissecting things and, and finding different messages um, depending on how you read things. And I think that's why I really, really like Nora's like contributions because the message is there and um, the themes are always so spot on and I always love this very like this tenderness and this care that Nor puts into their work is so obvious in the way that you see the pictures, the photographs being taken, you see the thought that goes around it, you see like the kind of lovingness in a, in a lot of their works. Joel Tan, I would say I'm a bit more familiar um, with him in terms of like being a figure in the literary circle in Singapore. Um, he's more known for being a playwright, I guess, and I... Okay, I, disclaimer, I'm a huge fan of his podcast. Uh, he has this podcast with his best friend called Kishan, and it, the podcast is called Tea for Two, and I think it's such an amazingly entertaining way of of um, dissecting different social issues in Singapore, and of course, being very openly gay about you know the way that they see things is it is always a delight to listen to. It's always very entertaining. Anyway, I just want to say that like he, you know, the character that he shared had this moment of like, you know, do you ever feel like you're performing a drag of yourself in real life? And I think that's that's really, really, very a strong image because I always think of that. Like I always feel like I'm performing a drag version of myself most times. Um, and then also, Jeanette Winterson uh, talked a lot about being uncomfortable in your body and she actually asked the audience like how many of you are uncomfortable in your bodies like you know don't feel comfortable in your bodies and I was really really surprised to see like a majority of the room put up their hands um, and I I guess I'm someone that speaks from a position of like having dance from young like I have always been in contact with dance from young like I've always been dancing I've danced since I was like six or seven never really professionally but always like personally driven to dance and up to now I still dance pretty regularly and I think I credit a lot of my own um, uh, like awareness and comfort of my body to that to dance because if I didn't have dance I would imagine how uncomfortable I would be in my body like I would imagine how um, removed I'll feel a lot of times from the actual world because I do think a lot of us think a lot in our heads and we don't use our bodies to think or feel. Intrinsically, like internally, there'll always be some conflict between your mind and your body, um, but it's also a very completely different picture when that's enforced upon you by others. Um, and you know, you're, you're never gonna be fully aligned with what, you're, what you think about your body and what your body will actually wants. Like your body definitely always wants something that you don't always agree with and sometimes you just have to accept it because you live in this body and, and you are part, like, you are one with your body. But anyway, that's digressing. Um, yeah, so that's the two panels I attended today, which are pretty interesting. I missed um, a panel that was on social media, that's by Crystal Abedin. Um, you can link her stuff here. Uh, I've always been very interested in her studies on social media influence because I guess I am doing some social media work as, as you are watching this. A lot of really interesting and amazing panels next Saturday. Excited for that. Um, and I'll let you know how it goes. I should probably capture more shots of the place itself. Um, yeah, and it's just the whole video is just going to be me talking about panels. <laughs> but okay, that's it. Enough rambling. I'll see you at the next, next weekend.
So uh, this, this is talking about what's the difference between uh, feminism in the West and uh, we here in South Asia. It's the end of the Singapore's is the end of the Singapore's Writers Fest and you know now it's like post twentieth November. Uh, I didn't really manage to go to as many panels as I thought. I wanted to go I think I went for like a total of eight or nine. Okay, to go through the panels that I did actually go for, the first one I went for is So What If I'm Becoming My Mother, the Mother Figure in Fiction. Then went for the Festival Gala, a Singaporean canon can or cannot. Um, then I went for reading the feed from booktop to bookstagram. Then I also went for this panel called End of Days which is about apocalyptic writing, things like that. Then the next one I went for was Care is Revolutionary Towards an Inclusive Sustainable Future. Now I went for another festival gala which is It's the Clichés That Cause Trouble. This had Jeanette Winterson featured on the panel. And then I also went for, and then the next day, the last day that I went which was a Saturday, the festival ended on a Sunday, but I was too tired to go on any of the events on Sunday. I went for a lecture that was about male writers in Southeast Asia writing about female emancipation. This is a lecture by Azar Ibrahim, and he's currently a lecturer and deputy head at the Department of Malay Studies in NUS. And then I did go for a Voices of the Future from Sing Singlet, which my friend was featured on. And then the last talk that I attended was the Feminist Dreaming the Future from Here by Kamalini Ramdas. Um, and I, that was probably the panel that I, that was probably the lecture that I enjoyed the most of the entire festival. Like, I think it was so great that they invited Kamalini Ramdas to come down to, to give such a lecture, to give this kind of very imaginary, but also like academic writing. Because I generally felt like the festival was very, very, very emphasis very heavily on um, fictive writing, which is not wrong. And I really enjoyed when authors, writers, or presenters were able to make that distinction for themselves. Like, what is fictive writing and what is uh, non-fictive writing, or, or how is writing sort of a huge thing that would blur these boundaries between what's fictive and what's not. But yeah, if I were to go through um, all the different panels and my thoughts on them, I did actually share, I guess, some of my own thoughts. On the earlier panels, and I'm not sure whether I did share my thoughts on the book talk and bookstagram panel. Um, I guess coming from someone that did that does do a little bit on these different social media platforms like YouTube and TikTok and I guess Instagram, I'm not really active on. I do really agree with some of the critiques that the panelists have brought up in sense that you know, social media platforms were not really designed for thoughtfulness. I mean, in a sense, you know, these platforms are very driven by visuals and speed. They're very driven by shareability. And of course, very early on in my so-called book content creating phase, um, I did go through a lot of that as well. Like, how do I make my content appealing? How do I make sure that, um, you know, I still get read? Like, people still want to follow me or people do actually want to you know look at my page and i guess this is where i had hoped there was a little bit more nuance in the sense that you know there's a difference between sharing because the world is sort of already like that and, and i think that's kind of like the stance that a lot of panelists took in which you know it's an inevitable fact that social media is part of our everyday kind of fabric and we can't shy away from social media if you do want to do some kind of work in the publishing industry or if you want to be a writer I totally see that. But at the same time, I also do think that, you know, social media and I guess sharing on the internet or internet in general is a double-edged thing and I think that's so, that's so cliche to say. But I do think if everything online is already curated, then you can figure out how much of that curation is up to you or how much agency you can exercise on that curation. So in a sense, with my own journey online, um, I've become very, very intentional with why I choose to say things more publicly, like why I choose to share books more publicly. And in the past, I just thought it was a really good way of processing my own thoughts on the book because I would normally not, you know, review a book so intentionally. Like most of the time, I just 
keep my own diary, keep my own journal. I did have a video on how I keep book, a book journal. It was a really good way for me to use what I already knew, which was social media and I guess like things like photography, videography. Like these were things that I sort of already used as a student uh, in doing creative work. And I do agree that it takes experience and sort of specific skill sets in you know, aesthetics and like knowing how social media work, knowing how trends work, knowing how people work, um, that only then would social media be a comfortable place for you to express yourself. I don't think it's a comfortable space for everyone, but in its nature, it's something that, you know, at the very bottom line, doesn't stop you from expressing yourself. And now when I share things online, I don't expect shareability. I don't expect people to want to look at my stuff because it's, it's aesthetically pleasing. I don't post reviews anymore on TikTok or Instagram. And I'm keeping my reading a lot more private now, like the books I share with you all. I do share most of my books with everyone here, but there are also some books that I take a long time to read, a long time to digest, and I don't share it here because those are personal books and whatever I want to share here are books that I feel people should want to read or people can afford to know of um, by, like, you know, and that I'm just this proxy through which people can discover other books or discover more interesting books, especially non-fiction and Southeast Asian works. And that is like the intention of my channel. So I do think when it comes to like thinking about social media and book content creating, of course, there is a lot of fluff. And um, I'm going to link down below um, Tote Bag Library, the newsletter that is done by Ruby, who was featured on this panel. And I do think she has really solid points on, you know, why is it that for her personally, she chooses to use social media sites in her journey of establishing herself as a writer. I also do think it's unfortunate that we are in an age where we expect writers or we expect personalities from the people who create content for us in which we expect to know more about their personal lives and we expect to know more about their interests and their passions outside of the thing that we're seeking them for. So in the case of like writers, we seek to know their friends, you know, their, their consumption habits. We want to know how they look like, how they dress like, when actually do we need to know those things in order to appreciate good writing from them? Um, do we have to judge all these kind of surface level things about their personality that they have to create an online self, a, a writer personality in order to sort of sell their writing to us? I don't think that is a good thing and I agree with Ruby on that in, in which we do live in an age where we expect that out of people. Um, you know, like for example, for me creating content, do you do the audience, I mean the audience would love to know more about content creators uh, from for like everything beside for the beside the thing that they make the content for. I'm sure a lot of you would like to know more about my cat or would like to know more about my life in Singapore. Um, but in the sense, because this content but because this channel is about books, it's very easy to fall into that trap to try and make your entire life content, which I'm also very wary about, and I did fall into that trap quite early on. Okay, very briefly to go through the rest of the panels, uh, because I realized I talked too long about those two panels. Okay, and I did go, I did attend um, the panel that had Jeanette Winterson on it. If you've read Jeanette Winterson before, tell me what is the one book that you have to recommend me? Because now that I know about her, now I know that she has so many books, I'm at a loss at to, as to like which book I should read first. I know perhaps I will read like Oranges Are Not The Only Fruit. That's the book that I want to read the most. But also, what other books should I also read? And what do you guys think about you know, her kind of direction towards essays and nonfiction, and especially while talking about AI. I think that was really interesting that now she's in a stage talking about AI and how that affects the way that we perceive gender and sexuality, which is really interesting. I don't really know about her writing, but I guess when she was speaking, there was a lot of uh, self-assuredness like um, to publish works and characters that you felt like should be heard in, in, in ways 
um, that people might not agree with and people might get angered by it. And I thought that was a pretty interesting perspective. I guess it only can come from someone who's already so uh, renowned and, and so doted on already in, in a lot of ways, like that kind of confidence to just publish something that might make people angry. I'm not sure how to feel about that, but um, if, you know, if thoughts about that, do let me know as well. Uh, but I really, really enjoyed the other two panellists uh, on this panel, Noor, and as well as Joa Tan. I guess we didn't really go into <laughs> the trope of cliches as much, and um, yeah, this, this is one of the panels that I felt like, wow, okay, the Singapore Writers' Fest is really, really, really like heavily skewed towards the personalities of the writers themselves. This is when I really felt it, and I guess um, there were also a lot of authors that came down that I was not familiar with at all, um, whom people really loved, and I guess I felt that uh, rift between my reading habits and a lot of people's reading habits, in which like I didn't really see a lot of non-fiction writers come down. So in previous editions, Naomi Klein actually did come, did actually attend the virtual version of the Singapore Writers Fest, and I loved that panel so much like I love that kind of um it was just so good and I wish that I had seen a little bit more of non-fiction authors as well as topics on climate um I think there should have been a cli-fi panel the last panel I want to talk about is the feminist dreaming by Kamalini Ramdas the professor wanted to you know appeal for her <laughs> Um, the act of dreaming as praxis itself, which was very, very refreshing and I really resonate with that because I struggle a lot with imagination, I struggle a lot with just leading into my own visions, uh, leading into my own like imaginative potential in a sense, like I always see myself as such a non-imaginative uh, person, which is bad because you know everyone has that capacity to be able to dream of a better world and to dream of how things can be better and I think I have not exercised that potential in myself for a long time and I find it very difficult to even like write creatively uh, or to even imagine from my perspective which is why like you know when I read poetry or read fiction and novels sometimes it gets really hard to to, to fall into it because yeah like it's uh, it's a space I don't feel very like familiar with um, like I can't fall so easily into that alternative space. Uh, not, not, not to say that I want to be more rational, or like I am a rational person because I'm not, but um, yeah, I, I think this was a lecture that sort of reminded me that, oh, you know, dreaming itself and being uh, imaginative and sort of almost being childlike and naive in a way that you see things um, to allow for multiple meanings to come out. Um, that in itself is important work in building towards something better, right? Uh, and, and sort of that plus being engaged in activism, being engaged in like creating these worlds by your own hands. And one really good point that the lecturer did say um, was that, you know, you don't have to always protest in big ways. You don't have to always join these big marches, you know, focus on acts of resistance that you can do and keep doing them and you know if you can do more then you do more. I realize that me unpacking all <laughs> the things I saw <laughs> is gonna be way longer than the footage that I actually captured at the festival and that's because you know uh, a lot of times videography was not allowed during the panels so it's not like I could have captured much <laughs> of the panels themselves uh, but I will link down like whoever I've mentioned and you know different programs I went and like whatever references I can get like the authors I did see um, so that you know at least you can go and check them out if you want to if you're interested in, in the panels and the topics that they have then you can also search the corresponding panelists and their works their ideas and to continue on that journey like continue with the searching <laughs> and, and linking and connecting and you know that's what's great about yeah like sharing things and you know and like going for things like this so that's the end of my vlog um thank you so much for listening to me ramble on and on and on and on again um yeah i just feel like there's so much to really process from the few panels i went to 
definitely a lot of great ones I missed. So if you did go for some interesting panels during the festival itself, um, do let me know as well in the comments, like what fe what panel did you go for, and what new thing that you learn, or like you know what interesting fact did you find out. Um, yeah, so thanks, and I'll see you soon. Please take care. Drink lots of water. Don't drink as much coffee as I do. Um, yeah, and take care. Bye.